Hey everybody, welcome back to another Gravity Ace devlog. Um, I'm gonna do another stream. This time I'm gonna do um, some art and try and finish up that uh, rotating uh, rotating laser gate that I showed um, the refactoring for last time. Uh, it's about 7.30 in the morning here. I'm trying to keep my voice down a little bit so I don't wake up everybody else in the house. It's also probably why you'll hear um, birds uh, tweeting right now. There's a bunch of uh, birds outside my window. We have some wildlife in our backyard. Um, so if you didn't catch last time, let me show you where we got to. So I was refactoring this beam uh, so that I could make one of these things, which it looks like uh, it looks like this in practice. Let me show you real quick. Launch the game. Load up my level. Uh, this is where I put it. <clears throat> one of the great things I love about Godot is that uh, you can go from working on the game to um, playing the game in just a couple of seconds. All right, so there's our rotating gate. I think it's pretty cool, but um, I think, so this center area is the part that I'm gonna work on the uh, art-wise uh, primarily. Kill that guy. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna work on this primarily but you see this um, collision here, not that, not that collision, <laughs> but where the where the beam hits the wall. Um, I, I don't know. It it doesn't look super great to me. Um, it looked better when the beam wasn't moving, uh, but now that the beam is moving, I think I want something different there, and uh, something. I don't know, something more interesting, like little explosions or something. The other problem I'm having is uh, at the end of the beam, when it doesn't hit anything, you'll see it right here. See, it just kind of ends. I want to fix that too, so that it, um, you know, has some kind of neat, neat looking, I don't know, fade out or something. Um, all right, so let me just jump into it and get my art tablet out here and just start going. Uh, it's gonna be, I don't know, it might not be great as far as um, me talking and drawing at the same time, we'll see. So I'm using a Sprite, and a Sprite is pretty great. Um, I'm using it for just about all the art in the game. Uh, let's see. Uh, you know what? I'm going to load up one of my other enemies too, because all the enemies kind of share a similar uh, color pattern. They have a similar palette to each other. Uh, over here, my enemies folder. Let's just load up the turret. My basic guy. Oh, wrong one. That's the sprite sheet that a sprite made, but I want the layer file from a sprite. Here we go. So um, you can see you can see in an a sprite file you can have a lot of different layers. Right? Each one of these is a layer just like in Photoshop. And then you've got an animation timeline going this way. So this is about what, 29 frames. And then you can tag the frames, right? So you can play a little preview of it here and it's going to play in that tagged section. So I'm here. This is the frame I'm looking at here. Let me zoom that. There we go. And then, um, so it's playing here, this dead section. If I click over here, anywhere in here, it's gonna show the appear section. If I show here, it's gonna show the recoil. That's when it shoots. Um, the gun is a separate piece but that's the recoil and then here's its kind of default. Uh, but anyway, so I just wanted the color. So it's this red right there, this dark gray, this light gray, this 
medium gray, this, this red, brown, is that brown or red? Yeah, it's that red, right? Those reds, the dark gray, those are the main colors. So let's do that, first of all. I think I want it kind of round, I'm not sure. And it may end up being a couple of different pieces um, because I think it'd be cool. I mean, the whole thing's going to rotate, but then it'd be cool if there's another piece on here, maybe rotating in a different direction or at a different speed. Um, let's just see. Let's just see about the base first. And then, I don't know, it doesn't need to be circular either. It could be square. I might need to make this bigger. This is 64 by 64 pixels. Um, let's turn on mirror. Yeah, like that. So now it'll mirror left, right. That's left, right mirroring like that. Oop. Right. And then this is, uh, up top bottom mirroring like that. So if I can turn off left, right, see, and when they're both on, then it'll mirror like that. So I can make a symmetrical thing. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna start doodling a little bit. Let's see, beam kind of comes out like that. It kind of comes out like that, right? Let's save this as uh, an ace file, first of all. You save it as an ace sprite file so that because the ace sprite file can have all the layers and the animation timeline and everything. And then when you're ready to use it, then you export a PNG and it'll create a sprite sheet or whatever. Uh, so let's do, I think I want this to be like, I don't know, I don't want it to be too complex. So I'm going to make it. Well, let's just leave it like that for now. I was thinking about the um, how many animation frames I want, but let's just export that. Go back to Godot real quick and take a look. Right, so already I can see the corners are going to be kind of an issue. Maybe circular isn't right, and or maybe circular is right, but 64 pixels is not big enough because this by itself is 64. That's 64 pixels wide. That's 64 pixels wide, 64 pixels wide are pretty close to it. Pretty close. It's, these beams are very wide. So let's do this. Let's do, let's just go for it. See if that's too big. No, that's about right. Right, so this is now, I doubled it. It's 128 pixels now. That's about 64, 64, 64, 64. Yeah, and see that works. It can kind of still be circular, round, right? And um, it fits the beam. I can do kind of a, let's move these. That, that, and this can be kind of like a, I don't know, some kind of round thing in the middle. And that looks okay. All right, let's see. Um, I think I want raise that. Yeah, 
that size is about right. So I'm going to take that, copy it. Uh, let's turn off the mirroring. Take that, copy it, paste it. Rotate it and put it right there. And again. Right, something like that. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Proportions aren't quite right. So that's a square, right? So I think I want to bring in these sides just a little. Bring that one in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Six this side. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that looks better. All right, let's turn this back on. Let's sketch some more. One thing you have to remind yourself well, at least I have to remind myself that whenever I start a drawing, um, the beginning of the drawing is going to be bad. Like, I mean, when I first start, um, I'm never, I'm never happy with how it looks in the beginning. It's going to take a few tries. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, get very deep into details or, you know, anything like that, because I want it to, I want to, um, find something that feels cool or looks cool before I commit too much time to details. Um, because, you know, if you don't like it, you have to kind of be ruthless and just erase it and start over. It's fine. It's just pixels, man. It doesn't really... Nothing bad's going to happen from erasing them. That's kind of neat. Like a little radiation nuclear kind of warning symbol or something, almost. Let's see. Let's change that to a square. One thing when you're working at sizes this small is you have to kind of, um, you have to, you know, make sure it reads well. And that means using, uh, you know, 
bigger shapes, more, you know, more, uh, nothing, subtlety doesn't, there's no room for subtlety in game development, basically. My symmetry is off. It'll fix itself. Just as we go along, it'll fix itself. And I can always flip and copy it later. Doing some erasing. Kind of like that claw shape. So that goes uh, up like that, and then it kind of tapers off on the edge, like a claw. A little wide, a little wide. I want it to fit the beam. So the nice thing about uh, working this way is, you know, you hit the export, like I can change the color, right? Go whap. Oops. <laughs> Go whap like that. There it is, right? And then as soon as I hit export, boom, flip over. There it is, right? In the engine. I can just see it. Um, once I get the animation working too, you'll see that that just comes over as well. Pretty nice. Yeah, so this has to come. That. Yeah, that's better. And then this. Too much. Let's do this. Let's take those. Copy them like that. Right there. That's okay. I don't know. I kind of like, I kind of like the round shape in the center, but I kind of also don't. I don't like these gaps. I don't like this weird shape here. Right, you'll find um, again. This is my. This is me. Uh, but I find. I. <laughs> Here's the thing. I think advice, let me just talk about advice real quick. Advice is always autobiographical. It worked for me, right? So when I say you guys or you should, what I mean is that worked for me and it might work for you. All right. I don't know if it's going to work for you, but it might. Here's just what's worked for me. Uh, just take that as a shorthand whenever I say something like that. Uh, and there's no rules. 
you know, everything is, uh, whatever works, that's what you should do. And not everything, not everybody works the same way and not everything Not everybody likes to do things the same way. That's interesting. So for me, um, it's about finding cool shapes, right? Uh, like if you look at this guy, you see this diamond shape, right? Just kind of neat with these little lobster claw hands, uh, which I like. And the enemies all have kind of this angular, kind of mean-looking, bug-like appearance. That's what I'm missing. Right? I'm missing this bug-like appearance. This doesn't look like a bug like the other ones do. I need, like... Yeah, maybe that's what's going on here. Is I need um, something in here. All right. So... Yeah, not everything's going to work the same for everybody. Not everybody's going to have the same experience doing stuff. Um, what works for me might not work for you. But that's fine. That's all cool. What if... I did that. Put some negative space in here. Make it kind of machine-like. That looks interesting. So I like to find interesting shapes. I think interesting shapes um, will kind of draw the eye in. Make people think, oh wow, that looks cool. It's all about the shapes. All right. Little spiky bits. And this can be That. Let's try that again. See, that doesn't work either. <clears throat> uh, I mean, maybe. I don't know if I like being able to see through it. You can see the beam underneath. 
I don't know, it's kind of cool, but it's kind of also not cool. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah, let's take that out. Uh, although, maybe I can do something like that. Hmm, it's starting to look like a church. It's like stained glass. Let's do something different. Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to put in some... Well, we'll see. So I do like these pincher shapes. And I think I want to do something like... Something like a cutout or some kind of... Yeah, something like that, right? Here we go. Mm -hmm. That looks more interesting. <clears throat> These are like, kind of like robot bug enemies. Some kind of robot bug enemy alien race or something. So I want them to be kind of angular and scary, like bugs and machines. But I also want them to have some kind of organic form to them as well. I don't want them to be too robotic, you know? Oops. Yeah, maybe something kind of like that. A little menacing, but a little... Um, organic, right? I don't know. I'm spending too much time on that right now.
Hmm, that's okay. That's interesting. All right, let's see. Um, I kind of like that. It's like a octagon, right? Yeah, lasery octagon. And then it's got this circle shape in the middle, which is kind of, you know, that just kind of mimics the um, the way I've got other enemies. They all kind of have a little thingy, like an eye or something. Uh, yeah. But it's this color. Like that. I might want to maybe, I don't know, I might want to make that thicker. Because this guy's so big. Well, maybe not. Let's Let's just leave it and see what happens. Do you want a little bit of shading in there this is sort of like a, like a little ambient occlusion I guess around the edge A little bit goes a long way. Something like that. And then I think I want something like, uh, let's put some, well, let's screen into the layer. So, now I've got my this base right, and I can I can experiment a little more by making a new layer. Oops, let's make sure I'm drawing on the layer, and I can draw on this layer right. Do whatever. Shoot, I turned on snapping. Right, I can turn I can draw on here like this, and if I don't like it, I can just delete that layer. And I still have my base to go back to. So let's see. I kind of want like something that looks a little like wires or something coming out of here. Going into this guy. Something like that. Like some kind of crazy alien circuit board. starting to look kind of cool. Yeah, that's fine. Hmm. 
Mistakes are fine. You can just erase right over them. No big deal. Sometimes, I mean, people come... I hear this a lot, right? Like, uh, oh no, I lost all my work. I didn't save. My computer crashed. I mean, that's kind of a bummer. It is a bummer. You put a lot of work into something and then it disappears, right? But, on the other hand, I always think that if you do it a second time, it'll be better the next time you do it. It's like uh, it's like doing a rough draft of something. Um, the rough draft is not as good as the final draft. And you might have, uh, you know, 10 different, 10 different drafts in there before you get to the final. And each time you do it, it gets better and better. And that's the way it is with just about anything creative I've found. So that looks pretty cool. Yeah. So like with these lines too, I can add an animation on top of them, like um, energy going out to these uh, emitters and then the beam blasts out. That could look, that could look pretty cool. All right, so that looks pretty good. Uh, it's not finished yet, but actually, let me see. Let me mess around with this just a minute. <laughs> Uh, let's do this. Oh, turn my symmetry back on. Let's do that. And then let's do... How's that look? That's pretty cool. like that so I mean you see it's just it's just experimenting like um, I don't I know kind of what I'm after when I start but I don't have a you know full picture um, sometimes I do sometimes I you know I have a dream I'm like oh I know exactly what it's gonna look like but more often than not it's more like this process where I'm uh, experimenting, trying to find something, right? That's kind of cool. I'm trying to find something and I don't know what it is yet. Let's just go with that. So, <clears throat> and then another part of my process here is, you know, I flip back and forth between here and the game and try things out and see how it looks. See how it looks, right? So I'll play the game a little bit. I'll do some art a little bit. And then when I get stuck, that's fine. You know, I, I, I give myself permission to get stuck. Uh, and to me, that is just a sign that I need to do something else for a little bit. And when you see, so it's important to go back and forth like this. For me, again, for me, it's important to go back and forth like this uh, because it's the only way. Oh, see, that looks awesome. The collider's wrong, but it it still looks pretty good. See, I think that looks cool. It's very beefy, right? And this thing's meant to be tough looking and indestructible and built like a tank, and it is. It looks tough and built like a tank and indestructible. Uh, it needs some life to it, so it needs some animation. It needs something else, right? It needs a little bit more polish on here. Um, but uh, that's cool. That's fine. It's better than that red circle that was there before, right? So, yeah. So I'm going to take a quick break from this part of it, this art, 
um, because I think this looks acceptable. It's fine. And now I'm going to switch gears a little bit and do um, do something about this this uh, contact point here. Um, and you know, as I go back and forth, this you know, working on this will give me ideas about the art. Working the art gives me ideas about this. It's kind of you know, it's all jumbled together creatively, right? So let's jump in there and see. Now I think so. This this is part of the beam, right? Which is this scene here. Let me open that up. You can see how it works there, right? And that collision part is part particle system. It's these white particles falling down. And it's this animated sprite here, which is all these frames. Just 12 frames of scribbles uh, played at 24 frames per second. Right, And part of the idea there is it shows where it's hitting, but also it disguises the um, impact point, right? Uh, can I show it here? Yeah. So if I turn those off, oops, save it. Uh, oh, that's not that's not going to show there because it's um, this is actually turned on and off in code, so just hiding it here isn't going to hide it in the game. Um, but it you know so there's a where the where this hits the wall. Um, this sort of hides it. It hides the transition a little bit, so you can't see. Um, how it doesn't have to be a perfect fit, you know, because this just covers up the imperfection. It's like uh, like the frame of a door or a window or something. It just hides all of the the junk underneath. Um, but I think what I want to do I think what I want to do is change this. First of all, I think I want to keep those, but I think I want to change this to a particle system. Uh, yeah, delete node hit. So in the code, I reference that hit node a lot. Maybe not a lot, but it's in there. See, there it is, hit, hit particles. So whatever I create here to replace this, I'm going to have it have the same name and structure so I don't have to rewrite any of this code. So let me just delete hit, create a new particle system, and I'll call it hit like that. And then I'll put this hit particles back inside of it. So the structure is the same, the name's the same, uh, the code should continue to work the same. I shouldn't need to change it. So nothing's showing here for hit because I haven't done a particle material yet. So you set up a particles 2D and then uh, the first thing I do is add a new particle material and then you can edit all the properties of the particles. Uh, it comes with gravity by default. I'm going to turn that off. Um, and comes with eight particles by default. I think I'm going to bump that to like 20 or 30. I don't need too many. Uh, and then I need a little sprite for these things. Let's just make a little 32 by 32 sprite. And let's just make a circle. Like this. Okay. And we'll save this in here and we'll call it uh, I don't know. I hate naming things. We'll call it hit. No, I already have one called hit. Oh, it's the old one. Let's call it Ugh, hit two. I hate that. <laughs> oh boy. 
does everybody have as much trouble naming things as I do? See, here's the here's the dilemma, right? Uh, I can't. It's hard for me to think of what the name is, but also it's important that the name is right because otherwise I'll never remember it later. Like, it needs to be something that when I think of it or when I read it, uh, when I read it, I know what it is. But also, if I'm trying to remember it and find it later, I need to know <laughs> what. <laughs> like, I need to kind of predict what would I think about this later? How would I remember this later? And then name it that so that later when I'm looking for it, you know, so let me just call it um, explosions to generic. Let's call it, uh, oh, let's call it impact. Yeah, let's call it impact. All right. It doesn't matter too much. So uh, oh, I'm going to need that later. There it is, texture. So let's put that right there. Let's move. Uh, do you notice how it moved? I was experimenting with um, making this a tool script. By making it a tool script, you're saying, hey, this code will run in the editor. And what I did was have it calculate the uh, collision point when the thing is in, in the node tree. And when it does that, it moves, uh, you know, all the different stuff around and I thought and then if it's in the editor you know it makes it a certain length and rotates it a certain way just so I can visual, pre-visualize it how it would look um, but it does make things a little wonky because the ready script only runs when you open the scene I mean it's fine but But that's what happens. <laughs> um, yeah, I kind of, I kind of don't like that. I'm, I think I'm gonna just remove it. Engine.editor hint. If that's true, it means you're running this script in the editor, so the code can know if you're running it in the editor or if you're not running it in the editor, and do different things. Kind of cool. And you have to put tool as the first line of your script. And this is intended to do things like you know, adding uh, new panels, the whole GUI here. I don't know if you guys know this, but this whole editor was made with Godot Engine. <clears throat> All right. So let's move this. So this should be. Right, something like that. Bam, bam. So this hit, I want it to be, I want it to kind of emit from a, an area here where this is hitting. So I need to change the emission shape from a point to a box. And then I'll make the extents of the box 32 pixels. See that? Let's make it 20 pixels and make the box 10 pixels high, right? So now it does that. See how it's doing that? So now, instead of before, it was coming from a point, so every particle was coming from one spot. And because there's nothing else going on, they all, they all just appeared right on top of each other. But now they're in this box, which is 20 pixels in each direction, so 40 pixels wide and 10 pixels in each direction up and down, so 20 pixels high. <clears throat> These are like the half extents. And now 
these particles appear randomly anywhere in that box. Okay. Um, I also want to animate the scale or randomize the scale. So let's say, let's say, oh, actually I want to do a curve. So what this does is it says, um, it creates a curve and it says over time from the beginning of the particle's life to the very end, which is at one, um, here's how the size should change. So I want it to start out big and then at the end of its life, I want it to get very small. See what happens. And I think I want it to be kind of an abrupt, like it'll get small very fast towards the end. Oh, look at that. Kind of gets bigger. Kind of gets bigger at first and then it shrinks. Kind of cool. And I think I want the lifetime to be shorter. Let's make it happen faster. All right. Kind of cool. And what if I made these a little smaller or change the randomness? That works. I did that. Kind of like it when they have a really short lifetime. What if I did more? Hmm, too many. Not enough. Twenty started out and it looked like a good number. Uh, let's see. All right, so. I've got kind of a thingy happening here now. That's technical term. I have a thingy happening. So the last thing, well, let me show you this real quick. So we'll look at it in game. And then uh, I'll show you how you fix the problem that I'm predicting we'll see. Or it's not a problem, but it's just a little visual thing that um, will make it look nicer. So we'll go down here, we'll see our gate right so there it is right it's doing its thing now one issue is that um, it's sort of behind the wall right I want it in front of the wall yeah I want it in front of the wall stop shooting at me so that means this needs a higher Z index. There it is. Right? So that's one thing. But then the other thing is you see how it's just following along wherever the beam is, that's where it goes. And I kind of want it to trail behind. So here's how you do that. Um, normally the particles system particles are parented to the particle emitter. But there's a thingy here. Where is it? It's not trail. Uh, it's drawing. Here it is. <clears throat> so you'll see every particle system. Let me hide it. See, it has this blue box around it. The particles will only exist or be visible inside this box. So you can make the box bigger or smaller, right? This is a fine size for right now. Uh, but then the other thing is this, local coordinates. And by default, the particle system has local coordinates on, which means they're 
wherever the particle system moves, that's where the particles are going to move to. Um, but if you turn this off, if you uncheck it, now the particles themselves are independent from the particle emitter, and they have their own, um, they'll, they'll use global coordinates, they have their own coordinates, and no matter where the particle system moves, the particles will stay with their own transform wherever they were created. So you'll end up seeing like a trail of them going behind, even though the particle system is rotating around. Let's see if that worked. All right, so they're moving kind of slow, so it's hard to see, and they have a short lifetime. Let me let me increase the lifetime a little bit because I think that would look cooler. See, I think that's kind of cool. See how some of them are like trailing behind? Now what if I did that again and did that? Let's see. You see that? So that looks kind of cool. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, it's kind of like a marshmallow or a cloud or something. I think I want it to leave behind like a trail of fire too. Like this part of the wall should be on fire for a little bit. That's kind of weird. I'm getting some weird kind of glitches sometimes. See that? Oh, I know why. I know why. So watch. It's going to hit here, but you'll see it here. Right? And that's because when it moves off of here, it hides the particle system, but it doesn't move it, it stays there. And then when it goes over here, um, it turns it back on, but those particles that from the old, when it was back over here are still there. So I need to actually turn the emitter off. I can't just hide it, I need to actually turn the emitter off. In fact, that would be better, it would be to just, no, I need to do both, I need to do both. So where I have hit, see hit show, I should do hit dot emitting, right? And where hit hide, I do hit dot emitting false. And Here, I want to do that, and I want to do that as well. That should make the glitch go away. It did not. <laughs> it did not make it go away. <laughs> Why didn't it make it go away? That's kind of annoying. Maybe I don't need to hide it here. Maybe when it's not hidden, the particles aren't processing. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, that worked. I think that worked. Watch this. When it comes off of this wall onto that one, you'll steal. Still, so that's kind of cool. Right, that works. All right, but I think the lifetime of those particles is too long. I think there's too many of them. So let's just change this back down to that. Watch this, see what happens here. That looks pretty cool. <clears throat> mm 
Mm-hmm. I think that looks okay. I think it needs to be a little noisier. It doesn't look um, impactful enough to me. But it's an okay start. It looks better than the other one, that sprite, especially when it changes angles. This one looks more natural. All right. Um, let's try this. I have a uh, spark scene. Which doesn't need that. And maybe I can put that in here. Let's do... that. And then when it hits, I can do, oh wait, do I need to do that? I think I have a game. Yeah. So I have a global function called spark, which takes position and velocity, and it creates one of these things. So here, and this game scene is, uh, it's loaded through a, uh, singleton here right so it's just always available and it's called game so i don't need to do this at all and here i can just say uh, let's put this here actually leave that there and I can do game.spark at collision vector. I think it might need to be negative because it's pointing the wrong way. And no velocity. <coughs> think that's working. should be making these things wherever it hits but I don't think it is uh, X oh this is why oh, that's right right Oh, that's a global position, isn't it? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's doing something up there. Yeah. He's <laughs> doing something. actually need to be uh, so yeah because I took a little position out of this is what I so I think this is what I want I just want this yeah 
Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> so that's a little more crazy. be a lot. I'll have to test this on a laptop, see how that runs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So see the hit particles are still showing, even when it's not hitting anything. So I want to do Uh, hit dot show. Still want to do this, right? Hit dot hide because that'll hide anything inside here as well. These chair, uh, child nodes of hit, like these hit particles, will also be um, hidden when this is hidden. So I want to stop emitting and hide and emit and show, right? And the reason that I parented this to this, I could have kept it separate, but I, I want them to appear together and I want them to be in the same position. And by parenting it like this way, I only have to update the position of one of them, the parent, and all the children just follow along. So now if I go back, I should see the spark stop. Yeah. And then they start up again. So I've got two layers of sparks here, and I don't know if I need both. I mean, that looks kind of cool. I wonder if I turn that off and just make these particles more crazy. And do something like this. Maybe that would be more. Maybe that's fine. Mm -hmm. See, that's kind of cool. Just a lot more of them, and they're like falling down. And they turn off. They come back. I need to do the same thing with the emitting on the particles. Uh, yeah, let's do... See, I'm just whacking away at it. Just whacking away till it looks the way I like. Let's see how this moves from here to here. Good. And then let's see how it moves from there to there. No. I think hiding it, like, um, hiding it must turn off the particle processing. So let's watch this next one, and you'll see when it comes here, and now when it goes here. Yeah, I think that worked. So, yeah, I think that worked. That removes the glitches, right? And it won't appear here. Yeah. Yeah, when you hide a particle system, it looks like it just turns off the processing. Cool. So that looks like something. Let's do 
this. Let's make these, I think these are still too big. So let's make them like that. Oh yeah, like that. And then let's just put a bunch more of them. And let's increase the extents a little bit. Yeah, I like that. A little bit noisier. Yeah. And then, in fact, let's change that, not from a box. I want to make that into a circle shape. So let's make the emitter shape a sphere. Sphere should be a circle. It's 2D. Well, I guess this works for 3D too. Let's do that. Let's make the radius. Like that. Let's see how that looks. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. I kind of like the box better, I think. Yeah, I like the box better. Let's go back to the box. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that. That's fine. So you see, it's a lot of experimenting, a lot of uh, back and forth, trying something, seeing how you like it, changing it a little bit. I think that'll do. That'll do. Yeah, I like that. I think I might end up with too much sparks here, though. I'm going to turn those down. So these hit particles, I'm going to turn down the number of them. Yeah, like that. Oops. That's cool. What if I did a, um, instead of game.spark, I think I've got a game.impact or burst. That's what it's called. I think that's the same API. No, just position. Right? See how that looks. Ooh. That's cool, actually. I don't know, it might be too much. kind of cool. Definitely looks like more is happening. <laughs>
I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to leave it out for now. So then the last thing I wanted to do was figure out this cap here. I think it needs something up there. I think it needs something up there. So what I'm going to do... What I'm going to do... I think I'm going to do... Those, those beam particles there. <clears throat> I think what I'm going to do is copy this beam, delete that, call this cap, and this thing is just going to be a square, right? And I'm going to, so I've got this beam cap, right? And I'm going to position the cap like that at the end of the beam. So I need to say beam cap zero, just like this. Why is that? Um, cap dot texture dot width, right? Oh. Oh, so I added a new node to the tree and I changed the code, but this doesn't get added like the code was already running because the game was paused so it crashed let me just rerun it here we are again So there, there's the cap, right? Right? And I think the math was wrong there. Yeah, there's the cap. Mm -hmm. So now, I've got an extra bit of uh, beam on the cap for the cap here, but I want to um, do something to it to make it fade out or something, right? So I've got a material on here already. And what I think I want to do is make this unique and then save it as a new material. Here. I'm going to call this beam cap. And same thing here. That unique and save it as beam cap shader. So now I have a beam cap material with a shader in it, beam cap shader, which is a copy of my old shader. And this is what does all of the wobbling and the crazy edge, the dithered edge here, uh, the noise there, right? The wobble. And I want it to do a thing where it fades out towards the top or gets noisy towards the top. So I basically want to take this make edges noisy thing and do it again. But instead of doing it on the sides, the left and right edge, I want to do it on the top edge. So, um, yeah, I think I want to do that, that, let's do this, UV equals UV, right? <clears throat> it's 
see how that changed. And then I want to do not that. Something like that. Why do I have an error here? Right. Something like that. Yes, there we go. Right, so now I've got a calf that just sort of fades out. And I can adjust a little bit here. Yeah, I think that's what I want. All right, let's see how that looks. So you do have to reload the game when you change a shader because the shaders are loaded into the, I, I'm not exactly sure why, but this is the behavior I've seen. And my theory is shaders are loaded into the graphics card memory once. And um, just changing a shader in the editor doesn't make the running game's shaders change. So you just reload the game. It works in the editor. I don't know. That's, that's my theory. All right, that looks cool. So it just kind of fades out there at the end, right? And it doesn't hurt you. You can actually walk through it. So the tip doesn't have a collision. Gives the player a little bit of a safety margin there. They can just barely avoid it. Ah! Uh, oh, I made it. Look at that. Oops. All right, so that looks pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. So I think this is an improvement over what was there before. Um, I think it still has a ways to go, but I'm pretty happy with the, um, the way the beam fades out like that. I like how seamless it is because it's basically using the same shader it just um, fades out there, right? So that's cool. I do like the new particles better than the old particles. They feel like they're more naturally following the shape of the walls than they were before. And I like how they leave behind a little bit of a trail, a little bit of a smoke trail here. Um, I think the next thing I wanna do is uh, you know, I want to work on this art a little bit more because this is looking, now that I've been playing this and looking at it, this looks a little flat to me. <clears throat> I want to add some dimension to it. Right now it just looks like um, a spatula, you know? It's just flat. So I want to add some more dimension, add some more details, add some depth to it. And I kind of want to leave behind little smoking sparks and fire for a few seconds wherever the beam is passed over so you can see little flames and burning bits just to make the laser look more powerful. And then I think I'll call it done. So a couple more polishing tasks and this thing will look pretty good. So I think I'm gonna call it a day and uh, thanks for watching. 
Uh, remember to uh, go to Steam, add this game to your wish list, tell all your friends about it, come follow me on Twitter, go to gravityace.com, come join the Discord. Um, let me know if you have any questions. I hope this was helpful to some of you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. Uh, if you did, uh, please tell everybody about the YouTube channel, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.